All right, what's up everyone? Derek here from Seminate Nutrition. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. So this week, I'm gonna be doing this Ask Me Monday inside the gym here because it is so nasty outside and it is just too wet and rainy to be walking around in the forest filming and answering questions for you guys. But it works well because I've had a lot of questions lately about calisthenics and I wanna help you guys improve, help you get to the next level. So I'm gonna be answering those today. All right, so we have three questions this week, and the first one is from Cronish. I had a question. I've been working out for a few weeks now, and when I do dips, it hurts the middle of my chest. Why is that? Is it because I'm going too low in the dip or just too weak at the moment? So, good question. I definitely experienced this when I first started doing calisthenics when I was trying to do some more advanced movements and dips as well and I definitely have a solution for you. So first thing you have to realize is although dips are one of the basics in calisthenics, one of the core movements, it doesn't mean that it's an easy movement. It is quite a difficult one. So don't get down on yourself that it's hard because it isn't an easy thing to do. But basically it comes down to three things. You're probably doing too much too soon, you have bad form, or you have lack of shoulder mobility and lack of strength in your shoulder girdle. So let me just be clear, some of this information that I'm getting is from Daniel from Fitness FAQs. He's got an amazing YouTube channel here and he knows the body and knows calisthenics so well. So some of this information is coming from him. I wanna give credit where it is due. After all, we are only as good as our mentors and he has definitely been one of mine. One, too much, too soon. And I totally get this because when I started calisthenics, I just wanted to like do everything all the time and go until complete exhaustion. And this definitely isn't the way that you should be doing things. So number one, if you are feeling pain in the center of your chest or in your sternum, you have to stop doing all the exercises that cause the pain there. What's likely happened is you could have bruised the cartilage that is uh, in your chest here, like around your sternum, and that takes a long time to heal. Because we don't have a lot of blood flow to cartilage, it takes a long time for it to heal, so you just have to rest it. There's really no way around that. So number two is bad form. That's another reason why you might be getting pain in the center of your chest or in your sternum. And uh, one of the likely causes is from lack of shoulder mobility or shoulder extension, which we'll talk about in the next tip. But I'll give you a couple examples of like bad form and then good form as well. So the main problem that most people have with form when they're doing dips is that they just don't have the strength or the shoulder flexion to allow themselves to go down nice and deeply and get full range of motion. So what happens is you end up leaning forward to try and get a little bit more range of motion out and that's when you can really hurt your sternum. So I'll give you an example of bad form dip. It starts out okay, but as you come down here, you either don't have the strength to keep going down further or you don't have the flexion, so you lean forward and your dips start looking like this. And that can cause unnecessary stress on your shoulders, but especially the center of your chest where you're having those pains. So what you wanna make sure you do is keep your body nice and upright, keep your chest nice and high. And then another place where people mess up with form on dips is allowing their elbows to wing out a little bit and that can cause a lot of issues, especially in the shoulders, but it can lead to chest pain as well. So it would look something like this. And again, that's probably just from lack of shoulder mobility and also lack of, lack of strength in the shoulder girdle. And this is what it should look like from the front. So one of the reasons why people will wing their shoulders out like that is, again, because of lack of shoulder mobility and then also lack of strength in the shoulder girdle. So on the next tip, I'll show you guys how to combat that. So the third thing you have to work on is shoulder mobility. And you really have to work on shoulder extension. So this is shoulder flexion, this is shoulder extension, and uh, smiling because I don't really know these phrases all that well. So one thing that I really like to do is this seated position. And basically you just sit down flat, you put your arms behind you like this, and you just try and roll your shoulders back and put your chest up and out. And if you want a little bit more of a stretch, you can kind of walk either your butt forward or your hands back. I find it easier to walk the butt forward and then do it again.
So another thing that I like to do to increase the mobility of my shoulders and just kind of open everything up and allow for more mobility is to stretch my chest. And one of the best ways to do that and to open it up is with a simple doorway stretch. So what you do for this one is just find an open doorway like this and then just put your arm at 90 degrees and rest your elbow and forearm on the door frame and then just kind of ease into it. And you don't want to try and stretch your shoulder too much. You want to feel the stretch coming from your pecs. And if you find that one's not working that well for you, you can always straighten your arm out, put it just around your eye level, and then do the same. And just kind of twist your body that way and just feel it opening up. So another thing that you want to do is to strengthen the serratus anterior. This will help to hold everything together and strengthen the shoulder girdle. So the serratus anterior is this muscle right here, or these muscles. And what that does is it helps to keep your scapula pulled nice and tight to your shoulder so that everything stays nice and in place. And this is especially important for people that suffer from winged scapula. And that's one of the main causes is that you just don't have enough strength in your serratus. So I'm gonna show you a movement here that you can do that will really help to strengthen it. So this first one I've been doing since I started calisthenics and I didn't really know a name for it until I saw Jeff Cavalier's video from Athlean X where he called it the push up plus. And we're really just gonna be focusing on the plus part of this movement, but you can do it as a part or an addition to a push up. So I'll show you guys here. So why he calls it the push up plus is because it's like a push up, but then at the top, you extend even further. That's the plus part of the movement. So that's gonna be the part that we're focusing on now because that's what strengthens the serratus. So what I like to do is just allow your uh, sort of chest area to sort of collapse down towards the ground while keeping your arms straight and then just push up and away from you. So there's almost no movement in the elbows, in the wrists. It's just all coming from that serratus. shirt off and you can increase this range of motion a little bit more by putting your hands together almost in like a diamond push-up position and if you find you're having trouble keeping your arms straight because you're just so tempted to do like a push-up with it and what you can do is go down to your elbows and you can do it from here All right, so the next question we have from Scott Johnson. So amazing drone shots at the beginning. Probably not of this video. <laughs> really looking forward to the new recipe book. Thank you. Also, question. Do you ever use chalk for calisthenics and why or why not? And what are the benefits of either way? So, good question. And I don't use chalk that often, but it's because I just forget to bring it to the gym. I think it's a great thing to do, especially if you're trying to get some more advanced movements or if you find that you're suffering from like a lot of calluses and uh, you know, rips and tears and stuff in your skin. So I just have like my climbing bag here full of chalk and this is what I use. Simple little chalk sock in a chalk bag. And it definitely increases your grip strength like a lot. So I would say definitely use chalk. There's really no reason not to use it. The only reason I would say not to use it is if they just don't allow it in your gym because it does kind of make a mess. The chalk's really fine and it gets the dust like absolutely everywhere. But uh, yeah, for like pull-ups, especially on like the rings, I find it really, really helpful. I can almost not do a ring muscle-up if I don't have chalk on my hands and then I put chalk on my hands and I can definitely do a few. So uh, it makes a big difference. I would strongly recommend it. It's dirt cheap. You can get it in just about any sort of supplement or sports store. So yeah, definitely get on the chalk game. All right, so the last question we have for today is from Lift Vegan. And the question is, I'm so close to my first pull up, but can never pull up all the way. Usually get just past 90 degrees and can't get the bar to my chest. Any advice? So yeah, I definitely do have some advice for you. Um, amazing work on getting that far because it's really hard to even just initiate a pull up if you're a beginner, so good on you. But I think one of the things that you could do if you are already at that point is to work on negatives. And this is really, really powerful in helping to develop especially that very uh, last part of the pull up movement. So basically you just wanna get underneath the bar and jump up into a pull-up and pull yourself as high as you can and then hold it there and then slowly let yourself back down and then jump up again and hold yourself there 
slowly let yourself back down and do this for five or 10 reps or so. And I would do this after you've tried to do them unassisted and just doing them like as much as you can on your own. And then another thing that you could do to help with that last little bit of the movement is just to do more chin-ups. So the strength with chin-ups is gonna translate over to your strength with pull-ups because they're very similar movements. They use a lot of overlapping muscles. So if you can, just do more chin-ups and make sure that you're really focusing on that very top part of the movement that's most difficult for you. And you should be well on your way to doing some more pull-ups. All right, so that's it for this Ask Me Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry again for not being outside. Trust me, I wanna be out in nature as much as you guys wanna see me out in nature, but it just wasn't possible today with the terrible weather that we're having. And I wanted to get some up for you guys and answer some questions on calisthenics, so it worked out pretty well. So definitely leave your questions in the comments down below. Hashtag them AMM so it's easy for me to find. And yeah, get out there, move your body, guys. Practice those calisthenics movements, and I'll see you guys soon with another video.